Welcome back to channel one of the Airports Association Room. We are excited for the business meeting. You can find the link in the virtual lobby to attend. Matt, the floor is yours. All right, well, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Good morning, doing well. Doing well, excellent. Well, great. Uh, welcome to this year's AND meeting, business meeting. It's a little bit different being on Zoom versus uh, you know, waking up and coming downstairs and, and being in the you know, one of the, the motel conference rooms. But hey, this is this will work. We'll be able to get our, our business accomplished. So, uh, okay, excellent. Now it looks like we have some people that are joining. Why don't we just give it a minute and we'll see who else is going to join. For, for this, and then we'll go ahead and, and, and get started here. And if you're on the, just the, the channel, uh, if you wanna participate in the meeting, you would have to use the Zoom link that was sent out on the agenda and in the email. Unknown caller. Oh, we got the duck yesterday. Good morning, Steve. Yesterday on our breakout session at the end, we had Are somebody you? sound like a little pig was like, nope, now we got a duck. I, <laughs> I wasn't planning on it, but I can if I need to. I wasn't planning hey, on it. Hey, hey, please mute to. yourself if you are not hey, presenting. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with, with the meeting as people join. Uh, we'll... Uh, if they have any questions, uh, they can certainly certainly get caught up. Um, so item number one on the business meeting uh, is the there. president's yeah. remark. And uh, I should ask, uh, are there any anything else that we'd like to add to the agenda? Okay. All right. Uh, hearing none, so let's go into item one, which is president's remark remarks. Um, so... Uh, this year was kind of a unique year. Uh, 2020, obviously, with COVID-19, uh, was a very, very unique year. Uh, some of the things that uh, the Airport Association accomplished was we had round uh, COVID-19 roundtables with commercial airports. Uh, so the, the commercial airports, uh, they were getting together about once a week to discuss the, uh, and this was would have been March, April, May time frame. Uh, we're getting together just to understand what was really going on with COVID, how it was affecting uh, the, the different airports across the state, what measures the different airports across the state were taking. So there was, there was some little bit of consistency from airport to airport and uh, very be beneficial. We learned a lot, especially uh, like when, uh, you know, masks were really starting to come big. You know, we, we all talked about, you know, what type of mask policies are we gonna put in place? What type of mask policies are our cities or governing bodies putting in place? So. Uh, it was very beneficial to have that. Um, we had North Dakota Aeronautics Commission on those calls as well. Uh, and it just were very beneficial uh, to, to have A and D. Uh, we had, uh, our, uh, we had uh, four, four articles in the quarterly or in every quarter uh, for, for 2020. Uh, we, uh, the board uh, this year, they helped put together the, the speakers for, for the conference, which was uh, very good. Uh, we've had, uh, yesterday was a great slate of speakers, and then today, this afternoon, we'll have another, another uh, great slate of speakers. So um, even with it being virtual, I think it's uh, turning out to be to very well. Uh, very, And then uh, aviation is another big topic that the board and the commercial airports took on uh, with TSA. Uh, TSA uh, has a, a security directive out there that they're receiving comments on that would require airport operators to conduct screening on uh, for airport operators to conduct screening on any badged employee that's operating within the secured areas of the airport. Uh, AND wrote a letter to the TSA on that. And uh, again, the, the commercial airports and the board got together to, to discuss that as a whole. And, and then, of course, legislatively, uh, in 2020, we did a lot of legislative prep. Uh, the board was very involved with that and uh, just made sure that you know, the, the goals that were set at this meeting last year were, were carried out. And, and so far, uh, we'll have a, a full legislative update here at uh, 1030, so here in two hours. But uh, the board, 
I feel did a really good job of, of uh, working with Odney, our lobbyist, uh, Shannon Lacey, in, in getting to where we needed to be to be in a good position. And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll go through more depth the legislative session, but here through the, uh, through the crossover, uh, basically every bill that we were working on uh, went the way we would like it. So uh, we've been very happy with that. And that, that was kind of, those are kind of the highlights from, from this year. Any questions about anything that the association did this year? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'll go to item two. Jordan, you're up for the meeting minutes. All right, everyone should have gotten the meeting minutes from uh, Matt yesterday. He emailed them out. Uh, hope you had, hopefully you had some time to go through them. Uh, if not, I'll let you go through in a couple, uh, give you guys a few minutes to go through them now. Anything out of the ordinary? Anything needs to be uh, added that I missed? I can only see about half of your faces, so. I'd make a motion to approve. This is Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Second. Who is the second? Oh, I'm asking for a second. Oh, okay. Sean Anderson. Thank you, Sean. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, if there's no nays, I think I'll, uh, we can move on to the treasurer's report. Yeah, absolutely, go ahead, carry it away. All right, motion carries. Um, so my treasurer's report this year was um, a little bit different. This is the first year I was did it myself and uh, not everything went through exactly how I was anticipating it. I don't think I coded some of the stuff right. Um, so I might need to go and uh, change some of those up, but I did add everything, uh, all the, everything that came in, all the dues, and I did add all, all of the expenses in there as well. So I know everything is in there. I just might have to go through and uh, uh, change a couple of things around as far as uh, what they're labeled as. So some of these might, some of the numbers might look a little bit funny. Um, but I do have, uh, let's see, our current current balance as of, um, well, today, I guess, is uh, $15,942.30. Um, if you guys want to look at this page through some of these, uh, some of the reports, like I said, it doesn't all look uh, exactly how it should, uh, but I know all the expenses are correct. So if you want to go to the uh, expenses by vendor, um, all oh, those were added in uh, and shows exactly as it should. And the profit loss, it's the one that kind of looks a little strange because it only has the expenses on there. It doesn't have all the, the dues that were added in there. Um, so that's something that I can uh, pass out to you guys once I get that sorted out. And then the other one that looks uh, strange is the uh, AR uh, aging summary. Um, a good number of uh, the airports on here have already paid their dues. Um, I just, uh, again, something I did not uh, label correctly. So uh, some of them still show that they're that they're missing, but they are here. Um, again, I will update that um, when I get that sorted. And Jordan, I think once we get that sorted out, we can send that out to everyone. Yeah, that's what I, I was gonna. Okay. Yep. Uh, I do want to say that the letter was very effective. I think we. Oh yes, uh, we got quite a bit of the the back dues back um, by various airports. Um, so that, like you said, the le the letter was uh, very effective. That uh, we got quite a bit of money back from that. So. Um, I guess I would I would say 
uh, because the treasure report wasn't completely um, accurate, uh, I will say if you guys want to table this and I will uh, send out the report um, once it is completed and accurate, uh, if that's okay with you guys, um, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would, that's what I would suggest. Okay. So, George, your liabilities on your, what is the net assets? $27,000. And I think that's part of the uh, the dues that didn't get um, labeled correctly. I think that's part of what that is. So, like I okay. said, once once everything gets sorted out, um, we'll send you out the the correct um, the correct reports. Um, that was that was on me. I didn't uh, find out that I didn't do that correctly until I sent these to Matt yesterday. So uh, that that that's on me. And, and Sean, I, I think what you're asking is what are unrestricted net assets. Yeah, correct, Matt. Okay, so the unrestricted net assets, what that is, is that's going to be the cash that's in our bank. And then what we have for our accounts receivable and uh, plus our, our – uh, so that's what, what that $27,000 uh, is uh, right now. So it's just basically cash. We don't have any other assets aside from our cash and accounts receivable. That's different than the opening balance equity then? The, cash? Uh, the opening balance equity would be what was in the bank account when we started the Quicken account. Okay. Well, it all makes sense when you get it straightened out. Thank you. This is Anthony Dudas. i make a motion to table as uh, Jordan requested. I'll second. Uh, this is Rick. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, hearing no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. We'll table the treasurer's report and uh, membership report, uh, and we will bring those back. We'll have to arrange. Uh, Beam, we have the Zoom capability. Uh, we can certainly arrange uh, a meeting here, and what I would suggest is the, the the board go through them as well, and then present them to the to the membership. So, okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jordan. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll move on to item number five, which is the UND Airport Management Scholarship. Uh, normally, I'd have an update for the scholarship, but uh, I have not received one from UND on what uh, what student received the the scholarship. Um, so I, I know that we have uh, I know we have given one out. I just not haven't received that from Jonathan Gurkey. Uh, I did receive uh, a thank you letter from Paul Linseth, uh, who's the Dean of Aerospace Science, just uh, con you know, thanking us for our generosity uh, for the, uh, the scholarship. And so uh, what I can do is, uh, if you'd like, I can scan that in and email it out to everyone. Um, and then uh, we did get our, our tax statement just showing that, uh, that we, we did give a uh, a donation in 2020. And then I also received a thank you letter from the UND Alumni Foundation for, for the scholarship as well. So uh, so I can get those scanned in. Uh, and as soon as I find out information on the, on, on the, the scholarship recipient, I, I will get that out. Unless is Dr. Kimville on? Does she know who maybe had received it? I don't see her on. I didn't see her on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, but the, like I said, I'll, I'll provide that once I have that information. Uh, moving forward, um, do we want to consider a scholarship for 2000? We do have uh, in the budget uh, for 21, we do have a $1,500 uh, 
$1,500, or actually we put in $2,000 for scholarship in, in the budget. And uh, based on the, uh, based on our current balance of 15,942 and uh, receiving about $10,000 $10, worth of dues, we'll have uh, about 25,000, about 20, you can just say $26,000 uh, going in for our expenses this year. Um, obviously, we have about $12,000 worth of lobbyist expenses that are still going to be coming out uh, that haven't been accounted for yet. Um, so uh, even with the uh, the lobbyist expenses uh, and the other expenses that, we've, that we have uh, for sponsorships, uh, travel expense, uh, office supplies, uh, that type of stuff. We'll have about ten thousand five hundred sixty dollars. And one of the reasons why is uh, we did not do a legislative social. We did not do a aviation day at the Capitol. So that saved the airport association about two thousand dollars. Another savings, and we'll, we'll talk about it here in a little bit, is we we won't have uh, funding for the for the uh, uh, training uh, sponsorship for for JFK or GFK, uh, which is another two thousand dollars. So. Uh, we were going to have our balance down around five, six thousand um, dollars, but being that we don't have those expenses, our balance is actually going to be up around ten five. Um, so, uh, if we wanted to increase the scholarship a little bit from fifteen hundred to two thousand, we could certainly do that. Just throwing those out as options, uh, but I will put that out there for the uh, for for consideration. Matt, as a, as a I'm sorry. Go As ahead. a parent of uh, of two college age kids, it all helps. Oh, it absolutely. really does. And 500 maybe doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. And I think we're in a good enough financial <clears throat> position. Um, you know, if we run into issues later on, I mean, we can lower it again. I guess it doesn't always have to go in one direction. But I think we're in. Just looking at things, it looks like we're in a a good enough financial position where I think, uh, I think we could, I, it, it hasn't been raised in a while. Is that correct? No, it hasn't. It's been 1500 for at least the last, I would say 10 years. Yeah. Well, if it's all right, I'll, I'll make a motion to, to raise it to $2,000. Okay. I'll second that Matt. Okay. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second for a $2,000 scholarship for an airport management. I'll say yeah. UND management scholarship. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, hearing none, motion passes. Uh, so we will work with the alumni founder, uh, yeah, the UND Foundation, Aerospace Foundation, uh, to uh, get that um, uh, scholarship moving forward, and we will let them know that we we've increased it to two thousand dollars for this year, and and uh, you know depending on how our finances look moving forward, we may may consider that as well. Uh, so the next item we have is elections. Um, if everybody's okay with it, I would like to move that to. Uh, to after the next two items, we can take care of those and then we can move to elections. Is everybody okay with that? I see heads nodding, so I'll, I'll stay okay. <laughs> All right, um, so the next item will be uh, the Greater North Dakota Chamber of Commerce request, uh, sponsorship request. Um, so uh, I've been approached by the Greater North Dakota Chamber of Commerce to uh, sponsor their transportation webinar. Uh, that is going to be taking place in uh, May uh, this year. May 11th is actually going to be the day it'll be on. And one of the, 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 the transportation webinar is going to be featuring a aviation infrastructure needs for large and small airports. These Webinars are, are well attended by the GNDC members. I think they have over a thousand members. And uh, what the Greater North Dakota Chamber, I should back up, the Greater North Dakota Chamber of Commerce, what they are is they are the uh, legislative lobbying piece for North Dakota business. Uh, they, they have a, a board of business leaders throughout the state and, and their, their purpose is to assure that 
there's a strong business climate for for North Dakota businesses, and, and they work. Uh, they are a lobbyist organization. Um, they're they're very busy up the capital uh, every every biennium, and then during you know, non legislative years, they 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 put together webinars and and different uh, different uh, training informational pieces for their members, um, including this webinar on uh, transportation infrastructure. And again, they're going to have an aviation piece. This is really the first time that they're going to do an aviation piece. Uh, last year, they were planning on doing something, but then when COVID struck, uh, they they canceled that. And if I remember correctly, last year, uh, Kyle and Ryan were going to speak, or actually, I'm sorry, uh, Kyle was going to speak, and then they had uh, UPS. I can't remember who else, uh, but this year on infrastructure, I believe they're going to have uh, Maiden Hunt speak, and then also Ryan, you're speaking at that, uh, and they're trying to get in contact with some GA airports as well to discuss the the infrastructure needs, and they are uh, re- requesting uh, sponsorship from the airport association of either uh, three or five hundred dollars and uh, to support that that piece and if you are a $500 uh, or if you're $300 you get your logo with a link on the website for the event registration page Um, you get your company listed in the content stories in their mag uh, in their uh, uh, daily Dakota Digest and blog which is uh, available to uh, goes out to all their members you get your logo listed with supporting sponsors at the event and on the agenda document and that acknowledgement of your business at the event. And then if you go to the 500, um, you get everything at that. Plus then you get to an opportunity to provide literature or giveaways to attendees. And then to uh, non, uh, and then if you're a non-member, which Air- airport association would be a non-member, we would get a recording of the event that we could send out to our members. Um, and so, if, so for the 500, so an additional two dollars, you get to provide literature to the attendees and then get the video. Um, uh, I am not going to make a recommendation on this uh, uh, solely because my wife is the communications director for GNDC. Uh, it was brought to me as president, and uh, uh, I will uh, I just put it out there for consideration on whether or not we have it. You know, from a financial perspective, yes, we could afford either a fiber uh, sponsorship. No problems. We Again, we're in that good financial position right now. Um, so if we wanted to, we could certainly do this. So. Yeah, Matt, if I can, maybe just to update Absolutely. a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. The GNDC reached out to me as well, uh, more from a GFK standpoint, uh, is my understanding, you're correct. They wanted a, a larger airport or commercial airport track, mm-hmm. but also a GA track. Uh, I did volunteer to present. Uh, that's actually tentatively scheduled for May 11th at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. is the, the webinar date. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, GFK did uh, sponsor as well. So I, th- they, I think they're open to multiple sponsors. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to give that that update, and I, I do believe they're still looking for a GA representative. Uh, the last yes. item. Yeah, um, if there are any GA airports interested that would like to discuss their infrastructure needs, um, please let me know. I can get you in contact with the appropriate individual at GNDC who's who's coordinating this effort. Matt, I'd make a motion to uh, support that with the $500 commitment. Sure. Um, I think it's important that the uh, airports, chambers, tourism all work hand in hand with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, and appreciate Ryan taking the time to uh, speak at that webinar. Okay. 
Uh, so we have a, a motion for a $500 sponsorship. Is there a second? Anthony, do this. I'll second that. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All those opposed? Okay. Uh, so uh, hearing no opposed, motion passes. Uh, so I will work with Jordan to get the uh, $500 or to start the process of uh, providing that sponsorship and I'll make sure the logo gets over to, to the GNDC uh, and any additional information they need. Okay. All right, we'll move on to item number eight, which is the Grand Forks class funding. So uh, the background on this is at the business meeting in March 2020, uh, we did approve $2,000 for a, a training class for airports within in the state. And that was the amount of $2,000. And again, due to COVID-19, the training, uh, I believe you were going to do lights, Rick, with ADB. Yeah, I reached out to ADB and they they are not doing any in-person classes this year yet. They're going to hold off till 2022. Yeah. So they have online classes, but um, that's not the type of training I don't think would be valuable for the members. So, so uh, based on that, I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, just provide an update of where we are with, uh, with that um, uh, with that, that, uh, that line item. Um, so we'll we'll have to bring it back next year, um, and to to ensure that the the organization wants to carry that over, uh, see what type of trainings are are out there. Hopefully, um, with you know, uh, the the vaccinations and uh, the 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 herd immunity getting spread out there. Hopefully, COVID um, will will not be such a factor, and you know some business travel, business training. Uh, or training travel will will start coming back and we can start doing those type of things uh, again in person. So, uh, again, that was uh, more of an update uh, on on that that class. Uh, and then uh, moving on to, uh, are there any questions about the Grand Forks class or the the training class that we had put together? Okay. Uh, I just want to move on to other business. Uh, uh, this is something I should have probably talked about in my president's remark, but it, it just came up to me. Uh, the board in, I believe it was September, uh, September, October, did approve the uh, a $250 donation to the Jim Lawler Memorial uh, Fund with EAA at the Mandan Airport to to sponsor basically EAA events. And then the, the board uh, also chose to do a $250 donation to the Jim Lawler scholarship fund that the fly ND North Dakota um, uh, scholarship committee developed in, in honor of Jim Lawler. Um, so uh, I think those are very important. Jim played a very large role in the airport association for, for many, many years. And uh, the, the board, uh, just felt it was it was appropriate to provide those, and so we'll we'll see those. We're, we're, we have the information, so we'll be making the payment uh, uh, or providing the payment to to those to those funds. And uh, just I, I just again wanted to to bring that up to everyone uh, as well, and then. Uh, before we get into elections, I, I do want to announce a, a couple uh, uh, couple things with uh, Airport of the Year. We still uh, went through Airport of the Year, and there will be a little bit more. It will be brought up over the, the lunch hour as well, uh, but I, I thought it would be fun to do it here with the, the airports uh, just by themselves. Um, so we did receive uh, a couple nominations for commercial and general aviation of the year uh, airports. And I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, Fargo Airport was um, 
selected as the Commercial Service Airport of the Year. Um, so congratulations to the Fargo Airport on that. Um, under aviation advocacy and community outreach, um, you know, Hector's done a, a great job of conducting and supporting the community through programs like art partnerships, which showcase local musicians performing live uh, in, the, in the passenger terminal and artworks at the airport um, that showcase regional artists there in the terminal. They support Make-A-Wish Foundation by uh, helping with uh, airline miles donations for, for Make-A-Wish and families. And uh, so, and then airport management commitment to aviation uh, through, you know, they have about $17 million in private investments and 30 and million, 30 million in public investments uh, at the airport uh, over the last year. Uh, they, one of the unique things I thought they did was they invested in a robotic vacuum cleaner to better manage the cleaning needs in the, the terminal. And that has allowed uh, more time for the, the staff to work on disinfecting the airport. Uh, they continue to support the Air National Guard operation with the MQ-9 Reaper there in Bismarck. And uh, with special events, they, they have the Fargo Air Show. They're a very big supporter of that. And I know uh, Sean, Darren, and, and Jordan and, and their whole staff put on a lot of time to ensure that, that that goes off without a hitch. And some of the major projects they did was expanded their cargo apron, uh, expanded their airport maintenance shop. And, uh, and it looks like the Guard has about a $32 million uh, support training center that will be uh, used uh -oh. for the the Air National Guard. So uh, a lot of busy things, uh, or, or a lot of things, good things going on at Fargo Airport. Very busy over there. So again, congratulations uh, to to Fargo. And for the general aviation uh, side, we have uh, Adams County Airport Authority uh, uh, or Hedinger. Municipal Airport is the General Aviation Airport of the Year, and uh, some of, some of the the key things that uh, is going on down in Hedinger for aviation advocacy and community outreach. Um, uh, they uh, before the pandemic, they had a high school shop class come out and tour the airport and, and learn about aviation. Uh, they discussed career opportunities in aviation, answered maintenance questions, and uh, on aircraft systems. Uh, you know, compared to the different vehicles for snow removal type stuff. Uh, they also worked with the Dakota Butte Museum and did a pre presentation on the hangar or the history of Hedinger Municipal Airport, um, which started in 1930. Uh, airport management and commitment to aviation. Uh, they updated both their courtesy cars, purchased new mower and tractor uh, and bobcat for an additional snow removal created a maintenance schedule to systematically update their aircraft fleet with uh, ADA, AD, ADSB. Um, they updated their pilots with iPads service paper that uh, serve as paper replacement for electronic flight bags. Mm -hmm. uh, Hedinger was one of the uh, was one of the only public airports in the state that held a fly-in breakfast and it raised fifteen hundred dollars to support the local fire department. And they supported other fly-ins by flying to, to the other fly-ins in the state during 2020. Um, uh, their construction, uh, they poured uh, some concrete around the, the GA self-serve tanks to help with uh, you know, spill prevention, or I should say spill cleanup if there's a spill. Uh, finished the complete reconstruction of both taxiways and created a parallel taxiway. Extended their crosswind overrun by 300 feet, uh, replaced the airport windsocks, and installed digital keypads on the majority of hangars for added security. So again, uh, some some great contributions down there at Hedinger. Uh, great uh, great application, and so congratulations to JB James, uh, and in all the the individuals down at Hedinger for Airport of the Year. So. That's all I had under other business. Again, congratulations to Fargo and Hedier. And I would open it up to any other business before we go into elections. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, James, there you are. <laughs> no, yep, I'm, I'm on. So, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Absolutely. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go back up to item number six, which is elections for the board. Uh, you do have a uh, A and D ballot that was part of the uh, part of the packet that I sent out yesterday. 
And I do want to take the time. I don't know if Rodney from uh, from Bowman is on, but uh, he's been on the board the last two years now, and uh, he's going to be resigning this year. He's, I think, uh, heading into, uh, I think he was retired, uh, but now he's going into full retirement and he's going to do some traveling with his son and family. Uh, so, uh, looking, I just wanted, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to him having a great time in, in true retirement. And I wanted to thank him for his time on the board. Uh, so uh, if you see Rodney, tell him, thank you. Hey, Matt, yes, this yeah. is, this is Tim at uh, Bismarck. I, I wanted to make a motion of unanimous consent to, uh, approve the whole slate of, uh, on the ballot. And uh, that way we can dispense with this whole thing. Uh, uh, and that assumes that no one objects and, uh, uh, and wants to add additional people to the ballot. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion made by Tim for unanimous consent of the ballot presented. Is there a second? I'll second that, Matt. Okay. So. Uh, Tim motion, Kelly second. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add as well is Tim has been on the board as past president uh, during my tenure as president, and he was the president before that. Um, so this is, I think, the probably the first time in his. 25 year career with, uh, with a and D that he will not be on the board. So uh, I think the round of applause uh, before he was president, he was uh, district five representative. So just about from when he started here in, in Bismarck in 96, I think it was a couple years after that he started on the board and has basically been on the board since so you could say 99. So uh, Tim, I think that deserves a, a round of applause. Thank you for all your time and, and hard work on the board as president, district rep, and now past president. Yeah, there you go, Jordan. There's a nice clap. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we have the motion by Tim, the second by Kelly. I'm not hearing any other discussion, so we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay. Uh, motion carries. Here will be our, our president. Anthony Dudas will be vice president. Uh, Jordan Dahl will remain secretary treasurer. Deanna Stoddart will remain district one rep. Uh, Bethany Hart, who will be new to the board uh, with Devil's Lake, she'll be district two. District three will remain Rick Audette. Uh, district four is Ron Lundquist. And then District 5 is going to be Kelly. Uh, he's not an incumbent at District 5. He was District 2's. Uh, so he'll just be moving to District 5, his home district. So uh, I just want to uh, just say thank you to all the board members. Uh, we, we meet about once a month uh, to kind of discuss the legislative piece and, and kind of everything that we, we went through during the president's remarks. So uh, it is a couple hours. And then when we kind of start planning for the aviation conference, it gets a little bit busier. So I, I do appreciate uh, everyone's time, and uh, I do appreciate everyone's confidence in me for, for electing me president the last several years. Um, I'm happy to pass the torch over to Ryan. Ryan's going to do an excellent job uh, with it, and over the last, I'm working very close, so it's going to be a seamless transition uh, from, from me to Ryan, and you know he's been working legislatively as well. He's, he's taken a couple bills, so again, I, I think it's going to be seamless, and Ryan's going to do a great job for us. So... Uh, so with that, that takes care of our business meeting. Is there any other uh, any other yeah. items that need to be brought for the board or before the the membership? I should say. Yeah, Matt, if I can, please. Yes, sir. I I just like to say, uh, you know, Matt took this on several years ago. I, I, it was before my time even here in Grand Forks. So at least at least five years. How long has it been, Matt? Six, seven? Uh, actually, Tim and I were talking about that the other day. I've been on, uh, I've, I've been president since 2015, so six years. Six years. And, and, and you know, he's, he's really done an excellent job. He's kept everybody informed. Legislatively, he's been on top of things. He sends out the notices and uh, keeps us all informed that way as well. 
And uh, he's been, you know, he approached me uh, a little over a year ago and said, would you consider it? And we wanted to try to make it a smooth transition. So it, it really has worked well. Um, I appreciate the confidence uh, and we'll do the best that I can. But I do want to definitely uh, mention Matt, give him the kudos that he deserves because uh, he's been doing it for a number of years now. And it's so important to, 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 to have that for an organization like ours, especially when you don't have like an executive director to, to help shepherd those things. I mean, Matt is essentially doing that. So thanks, Matt, on behalf of the organization. And you're not going away, as you know, you're past president. No. And, um, I mean, you know, you're going to have to get used to my 1-800, I need Matt calls. Yeah, you know, just happy to, to take them. Some of that transition. So I certainly appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, well, thank you for the kind words. Um, I'd echo what Brian said too. Thanks, Matt. You've done an excellent job, uh, especially on the legislative front. Um, super important for for the Dickinson Airport and all the other airports across the street across the state. You've done a fantastic job, and congratulations to Ryan. I know you're gonna have some big shoes to fill, but you have full confidence that uh, you'll do an equally as great a job. So thanks to both of you guys. Thank you. All right. Is there anything that needs to come before the membership? Anything else? Okay. Uh, so with that, what we'll the kind of follow-up from this meeting is going to be the financials. Uh, we'll uh, when uh, Jordan has everything prepared, we'll we'll reach out to all the membership and we'll. I, I thought this this Zoom meeting worked really well, so uh, we will. I, I think. Uh, you know, we'll, with Ryan kind of taking the lead, we'll go. We'll, we'll work with uh, with Jordan, get those squared away, and find a way. I think to get the membership together again to discuss the financials and go from there. All right. Well, again, I appreciate everybody's time. Um, so we got about. I, I thought normally our business meetings take longer. Obviously, we can get stuff done you know really fast when we're on Zoom. So. Uh, I think what we'll do is, uh, uh, oh, that's, I need to make another announcement is we are on a Zoom chat right now because we wanted it to be interactive uh, with, with, the, with the group. So uh, at the 1031, we, we need everybody to sign off on this Zoom call and then go back to the link that I believe Jamie sent out. Uh, yesterday or, or this morning. I'm not sure. I think they sent another one out this morning. Uh, but basically, I, I need everybody to come off the Zoom meeting. Uh, this is only for presenters. So uh, when we're done with this, we just exit out of the Zoom. And then at 1030, you can sign back in or you can go to, uh, I'm not sure what the event is right now, but maybe you could hop into the pilots or mechanics one. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, at 1030, they, they can't log back into the Zoom they, unless they're speaking. Oh. Okay. All yeah, right. They okay. can't watch from sure. yeah, they can't watch from the Zoom. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure uh, the way Brian no told me was we we had to make sure everybody got out. I didn't know there was an actual restriction. Um, no, no, so, they they just have to uh, watch on the website. The link that was okay. provided for them, they just can't watch on the Zoom because of the people presenting. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, you guys are gonna get kicked off the Zoom anyway at ten thirty. But um, I know right here at nine thirty is is going to be the. Uh, Looks like better squawk with pilots and then fundamentals for turbocharging systems. Again, I thought we were going to go through um, the business meeting. So uh, hop onto the pilots and mechanics at 930 and then we'll be back at 1030 with a legislative update uh, where I'll go a little bit more in depth on all the legislative stuff that we've been doing so far. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.